Okay, quick story that has me literally shaking right now. So for context, I drive trucks, and I stop at this Denny's to grab a coffee because I'm addicted to caffeine. I went in there to get my coffee to go, and then I walked to the bathroom, but as I'm walking to the bathroom, it's this old guy sitting to the left with about 12 people that's celebrating his 89th birthday. I got a call from my dispatcher, and he was like, yo, you can chill, no rush, they're not ready for the freight, so you can relax a little bit. Sat down, ordered some food, so now I'm sitting like across from the guy that's celebrating his birthday. Time goes by, I'm down there at the end of my meal and everybody that basically came to celebrate with him had left so now it's just him and his wife so as i get up to go wash my hands i see him and i give him a smile i'm like happy birthday young man 89 that's a lot of memory to have here's the thing i don't even know why i said that he could have had alzheimer's i don't i'm not even sure what i'm what i meant by that like but that's what i said and he said well I thank you young man and he smiled and he kind of just stared at me and I just walked back there and washed my fucking hands so I come back and his wife is gone she's talking to some other lady that goes to the same church they do and he sees me and says come here come here come here and I say yes and he said there are way too many things that I wish I could forget and I say yeah man you make it to down there a hundred years old I'm pretty sure you got a handful of regrets and he looked at me with the most serious look ever and said you have no idea well, now I'm curious. Do tell. He said, you know, I used to be a firefighter through the 60s and 70s. I said, that's what's up. That's a very commendable job. And he said, yeah, it should be. He said the 60s and 70s was a different time in every way possible. You know that, right? And I'm just like, yeah, no shit. He said, back in those times, I was a way different man. And who knew that we'd get to the point where we are in society today and I'd be feeling the way I'm feeling about the decisions that I made back in those times. So I'm like, man, if you don't fucking tell me, bro. So right before he took a very long pause, he looked at me and said, back in those times, it was very common for firefighters that looked like me to leave people that look like you and burning houses and buildings and horrible situations just to say they couldn't get to us. He said more right. times than he'd like to admit he would hear screaming black people and children in burning buildings and houses and apartments and stores and cars. And he would literally just pretend he didn't hear it. He said his last. I got a lot to say, but I'm I'm gonna just wait till the end of the video. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna wait till the end of the video, dog. Last time doing it was when he made eye contact with the baby that he deliberately went into a building to save and deliberately didn't. And he said that was the last time he did it, and he quit that that year. He said the nightmare still hasn't stopped. He still hasn't forgiven himself and therapy helps, but it's still a living nightmare to have those memories. And I guess that shit just shocked me so much because when it came to firefighters, I never thought of them like that. Like when it came to like police officers, lawyers and judges and everybody else, we knew they didn't give a fuck, especially police officers. We knew they didn't give a fuck about us, but I don't know why that didn't click to me that no, it was everybody that hated us. Everybody. Everybody had a hand in deliberately making our lives worse. When I calmed down from being mad enough to want to pull the plug on his ass, I thought about it. I thought about it. And I was like, of course they did this. Of course. Of course they did this shit. Duh. Like, why was I even shocked? Like, I, of course. But it is something that I cannot think about for too long because that visual of you fake going to save somebody and not saving them because of the color of their skin and the entire 911 understanding because, oh, yeah, you couldn't get Jamal. <laughs> oh, well, just another one gone. Like, that, that shit, I don't know. Yo, um, I 
I wasn't expecting that. I read the, uh, I read the title, but hearing it, hear him say it, it hit a little bit different. I have friends who are uh, Caucasian, and you know I don't blame them for what their ancestors did. I can't, I can't blame them. My only thing is, I wonder if they like comprehend it. I wonder if they understand. Like sometimes when I meet Asian people, you know, people from China or people from Japan, and let's say you go in a beauty supply store and the Asian people treat you funny. I wonder if they understand like what African Americans went through in this country. I always ask myself that. Like I wonder if Mrs. Chin know what my ancestors went through. Cause I've heard a lot of stories, bro. You feel me? I've seen a lot of shit. I feel as though the stories the horrific stories that are shared amongst us from our parents, from our grandparents that come down through the family tree, it's not the same as the stories that white folks hear. I'll tell y'all I'll tell y'all this I'll tell y'all this wild shit, bro. I'll tell y'all some wild shit. When I used to work at Goodwill, you know, at Goodwill you get furnitures and stuff like that. One time we got an old ass furniture. This shit was classic. Classic. It looked like it was kind of broken down. I'm guessing the old lady who owned it passed away. And now her kids were like clearing the house out. So they bought some of the furniture to Goodwill. That furniture, it wasn't cotton. Um, it looked like it was here. And it wasn't until a few years later that I came across a video where they was talking about um, black folks' hair used to be used to put inside of the furniture. And then I thought about that chair. Like, where I work at now, this is my last thing I'm going to share, bro. Where I work at now, uh, this was a couple of days ago. I actually got a picture of this shit, but I'm not going to show it. Um, part of my job is dealing with truck drivers, okay? And where I work at is a predominantly white community. It's actually like really country, but you know, it's cool. Like a lot of the people are cool, you know what I'm saying? But we do deal with like truck drivers from like Tennessee and from these like, from Alabama and these back country places or whatever. So it was a truck driver, it's a truck that came up there and it's me and my coworker, he's white, you feel me? And he felt some type of way about that shit, too. But basically, on the truck, it was a bumper sticker with a Confederate flag. And it says, uh, never be ashamed to be white. Now, <laughs> I don't think you should be ashamed to be white. I don't think I should be ashamed to be black. I don't think the next man should be ashamed to be whatever race he is. But in this country, we all know what the Confederate flag represents. And the fact that you associate your whiteness with the Confederate flag, that already shows me that you racist as f You feel what I'm saying? You racist as f Like, you can have any other flag. You can have an American flag. But the fact that you just have the Confederate flag up and it says, never be, a f never be ashamed to be white, shows me who you 